Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing part one of our two-part series on shocks. Now the first part is going to be all about the build, how to build the shocks perfectly, how we build them to get them as smooth and as consistent as we can. Now the second part next week is going to be about sort of the setup of the shocks, but let's not worry about that for now. Let's get straight into how we build them. Okay, so I'm going to take you through the shock build from the start and where I always start is putting the o-ring inside the spring retainer so i'm just going to pop that in there just like this okay so now that's in the next thing i do is i get a little bit of oil I just drop it on my finger and i'm going to run it around the o-ring inside there and what that does is it just gives it a little bit of lubrication so that as you go to wind it onto the shock body it's just a little bit easier it doesn't grab as much i think it sort of preserves the o-ring better and it just makes adjusting the ride height and that easier when you when you're setting your ride height on your car so you're just going to wind this on to i guess about where you think it needs to be just have a guess to start with obviously you're going to need to set your ride height after you've built these shocks so just wind it on about to where you think and perfect there we go okay so we're going to move on to the next part now and that is the bottom of the shock internals so the first thing we're going to put in is one of these machine shock spacers, the little one. So we use the machine shock spacers rather than the kit ones because they just hold the shaft a little bit straighter. They've got slightly tighter tolerances, so they keep the shock action a little bit more consistent as you go around the track. So we're just going to put the thin uh, flat shim in the bottom of there and just press it down with a screwdriver, something like that. And then we've got our first o-ring so we use the factory team green slime on the o-rings so we'll just get a little bit of that and rub it all over there before we put it in i know a lot of people build these build this whole assembly on a screwdriver or something sometimes and put that in and then put some green slime on after i prefer to just do it in the shock because then you actually you know you've got the green slime all around the o-ring rather than just right on the outside where it's not really going to do anything anyway so get it all around it and put it in um then you've got the big shim the big machine shock spacer you put that in then you've got the second o-ring same thing again just a bit of green slime on the finger rub it all around make sure it's on inside outside it's coating it all the way around then you drop that in then you've got the little top hat spacer there pop that on the top and then you've got obviously the blue shock bottom and the o-ring so we're just going to pop that o-ring over there first stick that on like that and then wind on the blue bottom there until it's tight and that is the bottom of the shock done okay so the next part is building up the shock shaft and the piston and putting that into the shock so to start with the shock shaft we use the factory team chrome shock shafts because we found that when you polish them and then you use them in the shock they just run through the o-rings a lot nicer and the shock just feels a lot smoother and freer so to polish them we use this mother's car polish and we get a little bit on the shaft like this and then you just rub it in with a bit of blue roll like this so you just rub it on normally you get a good bit of black stuff come off on the rag so you sort of can tell that it's it's taking off some of the dirt you can also use a Dremel or you can just do it like this. So you just carry on doing it until you think you've done enough. Maybe do from both sides. And that's that polished. So then you've just got to put the piston on. So you get the metal shim, pop that on the end of the shock shaft, then obviously the piston and the little screw it's important that you lock tight this screw because you do see sometimes when people's pistons fall off and you see their car bouncing down the track it's probably because it, the screw didn't have lock tight on so just make sure that this is lock tighted but you don't want too much because you don't want it to go all over the all over the place so just screw this in and hold it with the shock pliers and do that up and if you get any blue Loctite or any Loctite around the top of the piston, you just take the rag and just wipe it off like that. 
and you've got that. So then you've got the shock shaft and the piston built up and it's ready to go in the shop. But first, we always take a little bit of oil and we just drop it down there and maybe two drops or so and just till you see it coming out of the bottom. And that just makes sure that it's all lubricated through there before you put the shock shaft in. So now you just put the shock shaft through. That's all good. And obviously then you're ready to put the rod end on. Now with the rod end, obviously you need to pop in the little oil up there. That's easy enough. You just pop that there, get the shock pliers, put it together. And then we need the shock pliers again. Hold the shaft. Now we wind on the rod end until a desired shock length. Now, normally you may be following someone's setup which has the shock lengths on it, or at least you want to make sure that you've got the same shock length each side to make sure that you've got the same droop. So it's important you make sure that you measure the shock length. And also, if you're going to put any droop limiters on any droop shims, Need to put them on the shaft before you pop it down the shock body there but we normally don't run any of those so that's not something i've thought about so obviously once you've wound that on just get the vernier and check the shock length and obviously just then keep readjusting the eyelet until you get the shock length just to where you want it and normally we run about 28 on the rear something like that so there you go, that's that through there and you've got a whole, pretty much a whole shock there now. Now it's just filling it with oil and bleeding it. Okay, so this next stage is going to be easier if you have a shock stand like this, where if you're doing four shocks at the same time, it will just hold them all for you and make the whole process a lot easier. So the next thing we're going to do is just pop this O-ring over the top of the shock like this and get that on there. That just goes under the shock cap when it's on and just make sure it's sealed properly. And then we can just drop the oil in. So... We're going to fill it up until it's about level at the top, just for now. And then a very important thing to make sure that you do is make sure that you just move the shock shaft up a little bit and pull it back down again. And what happens then is a lot of air bubbles usually escape from underneath the piston and can just come out the top of the shock. So it's very important to make sure you do that. Maybe do it a couple of times. Just make sure that there's absolutely nothing under that piston there other than oil. And yeah, you might have to wait for a little bit just to make sure all those bubbles are out. Don't wait ages. It's fine to have a few little ones in there. Just as long as there's no big ones, then you're all right. So once all the air has come out of the top of the shock, you're just going to want to make sure that the oil level is back to where it was. So you just want it to be about flat on the top. That's normally plenty of oil to get you by through bleeding the shock. So now we're just going to take the shock cap and do it onto the top of the shock like this and we're going to use the tool for the links that comes in the kit so you can actually fit this middle part around the bottom of the shock here there's a little slot you can just hold it and just do the shock cap up you want to do it pretty tight just with your fingers but as tight as you can pretty much and then to bleed it i just like to wrap a bit of blue roll around it to make sure that you know the oil is not going to go everywhere Wrap that round there, and you get the little screw. And then you're just going to slowly push the shock shaft into the shock there. Slowly let the oil bleed out. All the way to the bottom. And just then put the screw into the shock cap there. Like this. Now we like to double bleed our shocks as well, because... We found that when we do it once, often the shocks pump up almost straight away when you're using them. And it, they just seem to work a lot better if you bleed them again. So, so you work them a bit and do it again. Just to make sure that all the amount of oil when the shock's working has actually then come out of the shock. So to do that, I'll just hold it on its side like this. Pump the shock again. And then when it's in like that, you just stop, let it bounce out a little bit. Then undo the screw again. And then when you push it back down, just a little bit of oil should come out. And then you pop the screw back in. 
As I say, the shocks just seem to work a lot better if you do this extra bleed. I think it's just as the shocks are working, they're going to pull in a little bit of air and you just need to let out again that little bit of oil. And they just work better like that. And once you've done that, the shock shaft should pretty much stay in as you do it in and it should stay out like that. So the whole shock is just dead and it works as it should. So now you've done that, the shock's built and you're pretty much ready to put the spring on, put the sp uh, spring cup on and you can put it on your car. Okay, so now we've done that, the shock is built. Now our next video is going to be all about the setup of the shocks, you know, oils, pistons, all that combined, springs, things like that. So make sure you don't miss that video as hopefully it will be very useful. But if you like this video, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.